Well, I figure you guys will appreciate it if I tell you the ending first. I didn't have a solution to my problem until I replaced the power steering pump. Now, I lost my brakes and my steering, which pointed to the pump, but the problem initially happened inside of the actual brake pedal. And so, you know, the brakes locked up. The steering was good, everything was good, and then it was a sudden failure and everything stopped working. It still worked, but it worked horribly. And if you got up to higher RPMs, you could get some steering, but it did nothing for your brakes. Brakes were trash. I just assumed Hydro Boost first, and the Hydro Boost was not the problem. So probably I replaced that needlessly, but this is the rundown of the job. You must reuse the master cylinder pushrod spring and retainer from the original Hydro Boost. Basically the test works like this. You pump the pedal three times while it's off and you crank the key with your foot on the pedal. Once the truck starts, the pedal is supposed to drop down and then push back at you. All right, so I'm just gonna pump, pump. I'm draining the accumulator. And then I'll put my foot down on the pedal. So the pedal drops down and it doesn't, doesn't push back at all. Sometimes with these brake lines, it's really beneficial if you try to lift or move it a little bit while you're turning that nut with the other hand because a lot of times there is spring pressure on these lines that makes it really hard. That nut is, even though it's finger loose on the threads, it won't move because it's got, you see how that doesn't line up perfect to the hole. I'm just using a uh, 14 millimeter deep socket on a long extension. This is a six inch extension and that reaches past these lines. So be careful not to drop these nuts. Oh yeah, don't forget the sensor. At this point I have the brake booster off. I'm gonna take these three lines off Make a little bit of a mess. So I think it's bolts of this kind. This little clip right here needs to come off. Well, that was easy. And then this arm. So now the pedal moves freely, that's the brake pedal. So this arm is part of the Hydro Boost. You'll see this pictured. I just used six inch extension, wobble, deep socket, 15 millimeter and this machine right here got it out nice and fast. If you lose one of these, you're gonna have to get uh, a washer for your nut. They're hard to lose, they fall right into the cab. Here's a pro tip. Put something under the brake pedal because after you take this uh, device off, your brake lights are gonna be on all the time, potentially killing the battery. I did take off my hoses to replace when you go to unconnect them, uh, you'll find there are two that are harder to get to, um, and they also are a lot more likely to have problems coming off. So these two that go into the steering um, gearbox right here are a nightmare to get off. The one on my right is a 20 millimeter, and then the one on the left is an 18 millimeter. I couldn't get these any other method than, well, one of them, the one on the right, when I originally took it off with this truck, I took the gearbox off and I had to spin the whole line. So this nut was seized onto the line. I don't think that was the reason I couldn't turn this. It was just monkey jacked on there so tight. 
maybe it picked up some rust because it was down low but this one i couldn't get i had to cut it so i used one of these and then because after i tried an 18 millimeter wrench i tried a line wrench that didn't work the only thing that was left was a pair of vice grips and the vice grips were slipping even though they were super tight so I switched over and just cut it off and then I took a regular socket and I was able to spin it with that. For access, I'll show you, let's see. So basically the, the one on the right is the easiest one to take off first and you can get it from up here, up above. Um, to, to reach it, uh, I don't know what you're gonna do with your bumper, I can stand on my bumper. And so I just squatted down and got this with 20 millimeter, 18 millimeter. And then from there, you can go down below. Once you get those, you have access to this one right there. Sorry, it's probably hard to see, but it's on the bottom of the pump and that's the output from the pump. Try to observe the correct orientation of this unit. Those two lines go over to the right. This is the correct orientation of the hydro boost. So you have one line going straight up or roughly straight up and then two lines that are going slightly downwards here on the right. So yes, this is at a crazy angle because there's actually a second plate that goes on there. That's a retainer for the spring and stuff, which I forgot to transfer from my core. Don't forget this little clippy. This is how you attach the brake pedal. These lines are a two piece deal. So you have to save this aluminum end. That's the upper section there and it threads to this. So when you look at it, it's not the same, but it just threads together. I'm just prepping these lines. They needed to have the new hoses attached to the old piece of line that's not being replaced and they also need those little o-rings that come with the new lines to be installed on the ends so um there's actually new o-rings with the hydro boost as well so those can go on those ends that insert into the hydro boost so everything needs new o-rings on it all has to be assembled and then still has to be loose for you to figure out how once you install it uh, before you get everything put together tight, you have to make sure that it's fitted properly and then you can tighten them down. So this is hard to get to right here. You have to kind of get your hand over around this way. And then you're gonna put your other, other hand on this right here. So it's really awkward. You're gonna to wanna to tighten this one first that goes up to the pump because it's the hardest to access. Second one is gonna be this line right here which goes up to the hydro boost. And then the third one, it's a little bit larger, that's gonna come up from the radiator here. Had the best luck tightening that last one from up here it's just a little bit easier to get to let's see this pipe right here where that goes down it's pretty good access here to tighten that in with a 20 millimeter i need to get these lines correct so i want these to look like that so i'm just going to pretty them up so i didn't yet tighten this fitting and this fitting because I needed to be able to twist this hose for positioning those lower tubes. So now I'm gonna just go ahead and tighten one at a time here. This height positioning is not hyper important. And you don't have to tighten these too much because they're O-ring sealed. You know, and that O-ring is up against a taper. So as soon as you start to contact, you're not leaking. To make this nice, I could go like this. That can hold the lines together here. Let me put my rubber hose on.
voluntarily sorry about this guys but I didn't video when I took this spring retainer off this is a spring retainer this star looking thing and all you do is just start getting those tabs out one by one you get three tabs out it starts coming towards you and then you get the fourth tab and you can pull it out and then inside there is just a rod so then from there you just put that in push that right into your new unit it'll keep you in place do yourself a favor and don't forget to transfer over the plate the spring and the rod it does not come with the new uh, hydro boost so now my truck is not fixed it continues to have the same problem so Anyway, that's how you replace the part. Um, with the problem that I'm currently having, I'm starting to think we need to check pressure from the pump before we replace Hydro Boost. Um, that's the only way that you could have been guaranteed to know that it was the pump and not the Hydro Boost. In fact, still to, to now, I can't know that the pump is bad without doing a pressure test, other than just replacing the pump, which is what I'm gonna do. Because I've already tried to look for pressure tester kits, and it looks to me like you gotta customize everything and build it yourself from, from scratch. So I'm just not gonna worry about it. These parts are old, I'm gonna put new ones on, rejuvenate the system, make my truck happy, and hopefully it'll be fixed on the next one. Remove the shroud. In there's my pump. I got three bolts that come off the back side of it. So basically the pump is this pulley right here. So I'm going to disconnect the line and let all the fluid drain out. I'm going to spare you having a look at that. And then I'll take the belt off. I'll teach you a trick since you're here. When you want to loosen up the serpentine belt, you really need to do two things. Number one, take the nut off of this right here and push, your, push that open with your hand. The other thing is once you put, you're, you're really going to struggle with a breaker bar, but if you get this thing hooked up, you take a vice grips and you can lock it to where it's ready to put the belt back on. That's a great way to do this by yourself. I've got my belt off. I need to disconnect my hose, my black hose, that's my return feed. And this metal hose, that's my flow. Yep, broke that plastic. Boy. Junk. Chrysler <sighs> plastic outlet that breaks when you remove it. That's nice. Gotta love that. Ah, there we go. It's 19. You have to remove these three bolts through the holes in the pulley. This unit has a pulley on it. This one does not. I can get that pulley off, but they're a press-on style. And once you take it off, it's never the same. Do not reuse the old power steering pump pulley. It is not intended for reuse. A new pump pulley must be installed if removed. When I ordered my pulley, the store that sold it to me said, this is the pulley we have for that pump, for that truck. And then when it came to me, it was specified in the description on the product that it was only for pumps that have a shaft that's 0 0.663 thousandths. I measured the shaft on the original pump. I measured the shaft on the replacement pump. There's no pump that I ever saw or touched that had a shaft that big. The shaft was about 630 thousandths not 663 and you couldn't get a pulley for it 
I don't know what these people are doing. I don't know what game they're playing. It's weird. Obviously, that pulley is available somewhere. I just don't know where. I don't know what's going on. So I just ordered one of these parts that had the pulley and the reservoir already included. You saw me break my reservoir at the bottom. I just assumed I was going to buy one with the reservoir on it because that's what you do. You just replace the whole thing. You don't try to monkey with a part like that. Uh, there's no need to take that risk, especially when you're talking about a blow molded plastic component. Aw, oh, jeez, buddy. All right, at this point, you just put those three little bolts back in. You gotta line the thing up, which is challenging, but I'll spare you the whole thing, but basically just screw them in and tighten them down with your little uh, 13 millimeter socket. At this point, you just reconnect your lines and you're almost done. I realize I didn't show you this, but you have to reattach the serpentine belt. I'm gonna start the chalk up and try to bleed and see if this thing actually works now. I wanna help you guys out. Basically, you are supposed to jack up the front end of the truck to do this bleed process. If you do not jack up the truck and hold down the brake pedal while you are steering lock to lock, the system does not bleed properly. So I did that off video here, but I did it this way and the system was not working correctly. That bleed process has to be done immediately before you drive the truck or you'll drive around with air bubbles in the system which can damage the pump. I did actually talk to another guy who has uh, a similar truck. I think it might be a couple of years newer or older, but he said that he had the exact same. Basically, he just did the hydro boost in the power steering pump and it solved the problem. He said he lost his brakes and his power steering all at once. So I'm just gonna assume that's the normal failure mode for this system. And maybe it was just the pump that it needed, but on my Ford, when the pump fails, it just sort of doesn't work as good. Your brakes kind of get weaker. Your steering doesn't work as good when you're hitting the brakes. That's the failure mode on the Ford. I prefer that far more than this because like it's dangerous. You can't steer, you can't stop, it's deadly. And this could happen like just at random like this. That's unbelievable. Some people say, you know, if you have a pump failure, you should replace the hydro boost. There could be metal in there, blah, blah, blah. That's not entirely right. You have to flush the system. I flushed it off the old pump basically disconnected the lines and ran it and added fluid to it and uh there's you know when you fully drain the system and stuff those hoses down at the bottom lets out every drop of fluid that the system contains best of luck out there hope this video helps you have a great day